Hello, today we're examining the famous poem Fire and Ice by Robert Frost. Before we start, if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, it would be greatly appreciated if you would. I have the poem here, so let's start. Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favour fire. But if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice. For a short poem it offers many insights into human nature and love. So let's start unpacking it. The poem starts by speculating upon the destruction of the world. Some predict it will be destroyed by fire, a solar explosion perhaps, or by ice, perhaps the sun will die. Some possibly refers to scientists and experts. On line three, Frost moves from the speculation of global destruction by others to introduce his opinion on the matter. The use of the first person voice and the contraction I've makes the poem conversational and informal. The first person voice makes the poem deeply personal. It was written at a low point in Frost's life and it is reasonable to conclude that speaker and poet are the same. Frost's opinion is based not on science but personal experience and is anecdotal. He says that he sides with those who favour fire and equates the emotion desire with fire, instantly making human desire a destructive force. Rhyming desire with fire stresses the connection between both, making his opinion forceful. In an ironic tone and using hyperbole, he says, should the world have to perish twice, that ice would suffice. Here ice symbolises human hatred, coldness and the heartlessness of others for others. Frost concludes hatred is as intense a destructive force as desire. Ice likely refers to the coldness of rejection and one person's indifference to another. Perhaps the cooling of a relationship leading to ultimate rejection. Frost therefore takes a global issue and transforms it into a contemplative study of personal relationships. On one level he is referring to human emotions, desire representing love, lust, material wealth and riches, and ice representing the hatred and indifference that leads to human destruction. This poem was written in the aftermath of the First World War, fuelled by greed for territory, uncontrolled patriotic passion and hatred for the enemy. Frost's close friend, the English poet Edward Thomas, had perished in the war and Frost's emotions were raw. Frost is also referring to his intimate relationships and loves and how the desire for someone, fire, had consumed him and their eventual cooling and rejection, ice, had devastated him, perish. On this level, Fire and Ice is a reflective poem on love being a destructive force. Fittingly, for someone with the surname Frost, he presents his ideas of fire and ice being equally destructive, 
through antithesis, contrasting fire and ice and global destruction with personal devastation on the ending of a relationship. Frost highlights the polar extremes of emotions and how destructive those extremes can be. Although he does not refer to a person directly, it is reasonable to suppose someone has left him heartbroken. So the poem is contemplative and reflective. The use of antithesis and repetition lends formality and gravitas to stress the importance of the poem's theme. There is an understated dignity in how the speaker shares his experience of love and desire, as though he is world-weary, worn out, but wiser. The use of a simple vocabulary, Lexus, makes his point clear and forceful. The poem is sparse, like a world burnt by fire or frozen by ice. The use of anaphora, a type of repetition, some say, repeated twice, lends a contemplative tone. The measured and balanced consideration of the world's end makes the speaker appear to seem dispassionate and unconcerned, but perhaps he is making the point that desire, fire and hate, ice, are emotions that desensitise. And in the context of Frost's life, the reason for writing this poem is understandable. When the poem was written in 1920, Frost was suffering from depression. In the same year, he had to commit his sister to an asylum, and he was still mourning the death of his parents, also the deaths of close friends, including Edward Thomas. The destruction through fire could refer to the fervour and fever of war, particularly the First World War, which sent a generation to their deaths and brought about the end of an era. The poem reflects an existential crisis in Frost, because ingrained within is the certainty that the world will end. It is only by what means that remains to be seen. However, the poem may also be warning us to avoid these twin destructive emotions. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. If you did, please hit the like button. Also, check out our other videos on writing and textual analysis. If you haven't done so yet, if you could subscribe to our channel, it would be greatly appreciated. Until next time, from Carol and me, write well.